101 Dalmatians. Adapted by Justine Corman and illustrated by Bill Langley and Ron Diaz. Pongo Perdita and their 15 puppies lived in a cozy little house in London. Their humans lived there too. Roger, who was tall and thin and played the piano, and Anita, who laughed a lot. They all got along splendidly and were very happy. Then one day the doorbell rang and in came Corella Deville, Anita's old friend from school. I'm so glad the puppies have finally gotten their spots, Corella said, stroking their soft fur. I'll pay for them now. Pay for the puppies, gasped Anita. Oh, Corella, we couldn't part with them. Don't be silly, Anita said Corella. You can't possibly keep 15 puppies. We are not selling them, said Roger, and that's final. Furious, Corella stamped out of the house. One frosty night a few weeks later, Pongo and Perdita went out for a walk with Roger and Anita. The puppies were at home, asleep in their basket. Suddenly, two men burst into the house. They put all the puppies into a big bag. Then they carried the bag out to their truck and sped away. After being in the truck for what seemed like hours, the 15 puppies found themselves in a room filled with many other Dalmatian puppies. On a couch in front of a television set, there were two nasty men who had kidnapped them. The other Dalmatians told them that the men worked for Corella Deville, who bought the puppies from pet stores. Back at home, Pongo and Perdita were horrified to find their puppies missing. It's that evil Corella Deville, Perdita said, sobbing. She has stolen our puppies. Oh, Pongo, do you think we'll ever find them? I have a plan, said Pongo. Let's try the twilight bark. The twilight bark was a system of long and short barks used by dogs to pass along news. The next evening, Pongo and Perdita went on another walk with Roger and Anita. While the Dalmatians were out, they barked long and loud. They wanted all the dogs in London to be on the lookout for their puppies. Pongo waited for someone to answer his barks. It was a very cold night and most dogs were inside. Then Perdita added her bark to Pongo's and at last they heard a reply. Message received. Most sorry about your puppies. We'll do all I can to help spread the word howled a great Dane. That night, the twilight bark even reached a quiet farm where an old sheepdog known as Colonel lay sleeping. Alert, alert, shouted Sergeant Tibbs, a cat who lived on the farm. Vital message coming in from London. The Colonel lifted one shaggy ear to listen to the faint message. Fifteen puppies have been stolen, he cried. I heard puppies barking at the old DeVille mansion, said Tibbs. You don't suppose? The colonel barked a message back to London. Then he told Tibbs, we should investigate right away. They headed straight for the gloomy DeVille mansion. Tibbs held on tight to Colonel's back as he rushed through the snow. Once they arrived, Tibbs climbed up onto Colonel's shoulders. He peeked through an open window. Good night! said the cat when he saw all the puppies. There are a whole lot of you. I'm looking for 15 puppies who were stolen from London. I was stolen, cried Lucky, one of the puppies, and so were my brothers and sisters. The men heard the noise and went to investigate. Tibbs and the Colonel ran away, but not before promising to get help. The next morning, Corella Deville arrived in her car. It's got to be done today, she cried. But you couldn't get a dozen coats out of the whole caboodle, protested one of her men, pointing to the puppies. Then I'll have to settle for a half dozen, said Corella. Just do it. She dashed out, then roared off in her car. Sergeant Tibbs and the colonel had returned just in time to hear Corella give the order. You kids had better get out of here before they make coats out of you, Tibbs whispered. Then he shoved one of the puppies towards a hole in the wall. It's too small protested the pup. Squeeze, ordered Tibbs, and the puppy got through. One by one, the other puppies followed. Suddenly, the two thugs realized that the puppies were escaping. 
The chase was on. Tibbs and the puppy scooted through the dark halls of the mansion. Soon they found themselves trapped at a dead end. The thugs raised their clubs to strike. At that moment, Pongo and Perdita crashed through the window with a blast of glass and freezing air. The angry Dalmatian parents fought off the astonished men as all the puppies scampered to safety. Once the dogs were safely outside, they thanked the Colonel and Tibbs and said goodbye. Then they hurried toward London. Pongo and Perdita led the way, their 15 puppies and all the other Dalmatian pups right behind them. When they reached a frozen stream, they carefully crossed the slippery surface so they wouldn't leave paw prints. Then they resumed the race home. All along the route, the Dalmatians were helped by other dogs. A black Labrador retriever arranged for them to ride to London in a moving van. The Dalmatians waited in a shed while the van was being fixed. Suddenly, Corella's big car pulled up outside. Somehow, she had followed their tracks. Oh, Pongo, said Perdita, how will we get to the van? Pongo noticed lots of ashes in the fireplace. If they all rolled in the soot, they would look just like black Labradors. When the van was ready, the dogs marched outside. One after another, the soot-covered puppies were lifted into the van. Before Pongo had a chance to pick up the last one, a clump of snow fell from the shed onto the puppy. Pongo snatched up the pup, but the snow had washed away the soot. From her car, Corella could see the white fur and black spots. They're escaping, she shouted as the van moved away. Faster and faster went the van, but Corella's car drew closer and closer. She was screaming in anger. Then she began to yell in fear. Her car skidded on an icy road. Corella tried to stop it, but her car spun around and slid into a ditch. The last the Dalmatian saw Corella, she was standing beside her wrecked car having a nasty temper tantrum. When the van reached the cozy little house in London, Roger and Anita were overjoyed. And when they counted the dogs, they discovered that they now had 101 Dalmatians. We'll have to buy a bigger house in the country, said Roger. We'll have a Dalmatian plantation. And they did exactly that. Pongo Perdita and all the spotted puppies lived there happily ever after.